All right. Man, the wind feels great. Thank you for the fall weather. Please bless us as we film this 2007 Lexus LS460 LWB. This is a 70 plus thousand dollar vehicle back in 2007. Today we're gonna to be taking an in-depth look at it and see why this vehicle was over $70,000 back in 07, which was 10 years ago, and also what the price is today. Stay tuned. So here it is, the Lexus LS 460LWB. The L stands for long, that's right. Back in 07, Lexus made this its fourth generation flagship sedan. And it surely is a flagship, and even today in 2017, for just the right person. Now let's think about it just for a minute. Again, flagship sedan, so when we think flagship, we think the big vehicle that Lexus offers. It is 16 feet long, okay? So it's much bigger than your average size alligator here in the Carolinas. That's definitely for sure. 16 feet, wow. This is a massive size vehicle, and it's really the king of the road. Let's take a look at a few other things about the Lexus LS 460. All right, so like we said, it's definitely long, 16 feet. Wow, that's big. Also, think about it, in a flagship vehicle, what do people love doing with these types of vehicles? Again, they just spent over $70,000 at their local dealership back in 07. You're gonna wanna travel, that's right. And you can definitely travel with this one right here. You're gonna have a 22 gallon fuel tank in the Lexus LS460. So it's gonna hold all the fuel to get from Charleston down to Orlando, Florida to go to Disney World or hey, maybe a business meeting and just one ride down. So it's nice just to book it and not have to pull over and get gas and things like that. So that's definitely an A plus. Now when we get to the inside of this vehicle, I'll show you a few other reasons why you may just wanna sit in the back of the Lexus instead of being the driver. Let's keep on rolling through. Let's take a look under the hood. So let's look under here. Let's see how easy it is to get up under the hood of the Lexus. And uh, as you can tell, I just popped it a minute ago. You're not gonna pull up from the grill. We're learning that right now. You're gonna grab right here, there's a little button. And you know, unlike most uh, luxury vehicles, well, if I can find the latch, here we go. There should be, goodness gracious, where is, this is tough. I guess it's tough to do with just one hand. Finally got it. As you can see, shocks under the hood, that's nice. But like I was about to say on most luxury vehicles, a lot of plastic and a lot of things covering up the engine, but this is almost fully covered. Look at this. You don't really see this a whole lot on modern day vehicles, this much plastic. It is covered. I mean, you could literally play a game of poker or spades while the hood's popped on this vehicle. But V8, holy mackerel, it's 4.6 liter V8. Also pumping out 380 horsepower, 364 foot-pounds of torque. It's rear-wheel drive. Could I not say any more? I mean, my goodness, this vehicle will get up and haul butt down the road. That's definitely for sure. I mean, we may test that out today on the video towards the end. Also, fuel economy, 24 on the highway and around 16 to 18 mile per gallon just cruising around in the city. So for a 4.6 liter V8, I would say 24 mile per gallon is doing pretty good on a vehicle this big that weighs 4,300 pounds. It's pretty heavy. Now something I've been itching to tell you about this car right here, now think again, it's a 2007. We're talking 10 years ago. And you know, technology is advancing every day, every month month, every week, every year, technology gets better and better and better. Now think about it, in 2007, I will tell you right now, Lexus was already ahead of the curve on technology. And even kind of nice features that people like, 
and that you really don't get on a lot of vehicles even in 2017, just like this feature here. Well, first off, yes, of course, a smart key with the car. Just walk up, put your hand on the handle, it opens right up. But here's the next best feature that everybody would love to have on their sedan. That's right, the power trunk. Hit a button, the trunk opens up just like so, and man, if it doesn't look good while doing it. Also, inside the trunk, you have a ton of cargo space. There is definitely a lot of room inside of here. Let's see if I can fit inside of there. Yeah, so I'm gonna try sitting inside of here. I don't do this very often, but hey, I'm six foot one. I believe I'll be just fine. Yeah, we're good. And uh, hey, with the technology I have, just hit the button, drops it right back down. Or maybe not. <laughs> maybe there's a safety feature where it won't go down while someone's in here. But there's always this button right up top that'll close me back in. Now, now that I'm on the inside, you're wondering, okay, how's this guy gonna get back out of here? Well, there actually is a glow-in-the-dark switch here that I can press down to open it right back up. That's pretty sweet. And there's a little light in there, which does shut off after you're inside. So it gets pretty dark in there. Here's another great feature that most modern cars don't come with nowadays. They do have a full size spare on this Lexus right here, and I'd hope so for over $70,000. But again, most cars nowadays just have a little donut spare, not a full size. So that's pretty nice. And again, you got the button here that's great. Just press that, closes it right back up. Now, I do get the pleasure of filming all kinds of vehicles all the time. I don't get the pleasure of filming older ones like this all the time, so I really made a point today to do a video on it. But one thing I wanted to show you, you know, if you've watched my channels, if you're a subscriber, you'll know I filmed the Volkswagen Atlas SUV for 2018. We've done a bunch of videos on them. One thing I can show you that you're gonna notice right off the get-go if you're familiar with that SUV is in the rear end exhaust pipes. The Lexus, even back in 07, I mean, Volkswagen is just now doing this in 2018, these flush mount tips right here. This is really sweet, it looks very luxurious, and it just flows so nicely on the back bumper. One thing that's nice about the Lexus, though, is these actually are fully functional and exhaust fumes come out on both sides. Your Volkswagen Atlas, it's just for looks. Also, a few notable mentions on the rear end of the Lexus. You have this cool looking little spoiler off the back of the trunk, a visor here to keep the sun out, and also this really sexy rear deck lid spoiler on the back. It just kind of freshens it up, and even though it's a luxury sedan, still kind of gives it a sporty look. Like we said earlier, again, you got your smart key, just walk up, open the door, just like so. Let's go ahead and hop in on the interior and have a look around. So, I mean, one thing right off the get-go on this vehicle is going to be a lot of interior space and definitely a great vehicle for someone that's a little bit taller, a lot of leg room. As you can see right here, I'm a guy that's six foot one, and my leg can pretty much extend all the way out, which is nice. So I can roll that seat forward, back, and then in the back back there, also tons of rear leg room for me in the back if I want to be chauffeured around the town and enjoy myself. Let's go ahead and switch out camera views and get a... POV style view on the interior. All right, let's shut the door. And it really is quiet on the inside once you're in here. That's another nice feature about luxury cars. It's quiet on the interior. So, you know, those are things that uh, when you pay a lot of money for a car, those are those extra things that really go involved in, uh, in buying it, you know, or in making it to make it sure it's quiet. Um, here's your key. So again, you know, even in 07, Lexus, like I said earlier, is ahead of the curve. You got your start-stop engine button right there. You know, a lot of cars didn't have that back in 07. You know, your steering wheel is electronic with tilt and telescoping. The display screens look great, but I love how this is all electronic in here, and uh, and it flows nicely with your uh, with your power memory seats and all that kind of stuff there. You can tell you have three different settings right there. One quick thing I can tell you folks, you know, you may wonder, you know, why do we have three different settings on our power 
power seats right here, right? Because you know, if you're the driver, you're gonna only really have it in one there. Well, think about it for a quick moment. If you are the husband that owns the car, you know, you may have it on driver one, and then you have a second key to the vehicle, right? Let's say you give that key to your wife. Well, then she gets in the car with her key, cranks it, sets up her seating preferences and steering wheel and all that. And so basically, when she comes up to the car to drive it with her key in her hand, the car will automatically get in position for her. When you come up with your key in your hand, the car will get back into position for you. So that's kind of how memory seats work on a vehicle. And I'm only can assume that number three there, maybe it has three keys if someone else is to drive the car like the person chauffeuring you around town, right? Okay, so definitely a lot of wood trim on the inside. You have a Mark Levingston stereo system. Back in 07, Mark Levingston was the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop of music systems in cars. And I'm sure today he still has a great stereo system for vehicles, right? You usually see Mark Levingston in hiring cars like Lexus, Acura, you know, Mercedes and things like that. Anyways, um, we're, right now we're kind of checking features out on the vehicle that were high tech for their time back in 07. And uh, one thing I can tell you, back in 07, if you had a backup camera on your car, you were definitely high tech. So let's go ahead and put it in reverse and check that out. And yes, there is the backup camera right there. It's a uh, fisheye lens on there, so it gives it kind of a wide angle view to everything going on behind the vehicle. Steering position is not neutral. Turn the steering wheel left. Steering, okay, cool. So it even gives you these really cool little setups here so you can uh, make sure you don't hit anything while backing up your vehicle. As you can see all the little arrows and things like that, it says adjust the frame to retarget. That's pretty neat. Won't spend too much more time on that, but again, those are some of the tech features for 07 that came on this particular car. Now, the only thing I notice on the inside on most luxury vehicles is you just, on this car, you just have a regular digital clock there, and a lot of the luxury vehicles back in the day had a nice clock, like an analog type clock in the car. Now, with age on this vehicle, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in drive. You can see little things like a crack right here in the plastic from heat and things like that going on. And, uh, you know, so that's things to notice on a, an older 10-year-old vehicle. Um, let's keep looking. I'm Really, this is my reaction to this car. Now, even in 07, there is no pull up park brake or kick your foot down to put it in park back then you still had a how about that an electronic park brake pretty sweet if you can see that right there there's a button to push and it will go ahead and uh, go ahead and make that park brake engage that's pretty sweet again electronic park brake a lot of people nowadays are like oh i got an electronic park brake on my new car it was around back in 07 with lexus your glove box definitely can be locked up and push the button drops down it's nice and big nothing real special going on in there i will point out to how clean this car is the man that traded it in bought a f350 Ford 2017 from us and uh, this was his vehicle his he really did baby it up dual climate control of course wood trim here's another great feature in 07 that really was ahead of its time heated seats not so much but cooled seats definitely so that's nice I got them on right now I can feel them going through the seats very comfortable rear all that kind of stuff we're gonna get to the back in just a minute pretty deep size cup holders there the rear the rear shade in the back let's just have a quick look as you can see a lot of luxury cars will have that and now you're starting to notice these shades on the side windows and things like that on a lot of your uh, vehicles nowadays there is your uh, sunglass holders up top right there sunglasses have definitely got a lot bigger in today's time because people like to be more flashier so uh, this is really not that big for your sunglasses in 2017 2018 uh, lighting on the interior not so much with LED let's see if we can get it on but oh my goodness gracious Lexus just stunned me LED lighting how can I tell I can tell by the color there and that's definitely definitely seems to be an LED light on the interior how about that and even some ambient lighting right there wow that's amazing let's see if they did LEDs up here no they did not just your traditional yellowish colored bulb there um, the headliner in the car is suede which is nice 
No dual sunroofs, just a traditional sunroof inside of this vehicle. You do have handles around every door sill on the car. And let's take a look real quickly in our center console here, which is leather wrapped. Plenty of cargo space with a 12 volt down bottom. That's about it. No USB, no auxiliary ports inside of this vehicle. Now, if you were looking for more luxury features, you do have it. As you can see, controls here on your seats. So lots of different power options on the seat. Probably not the best place to have them on the left-hand side of the seat. It's not on the driver's side over here. Mine are down below. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the headroom. As we can see, plenty of headroom in this car and legroom. That's definitely passing the test. So as you can see, my legs are doing great back here. I mean, that's a good six to seven inches of rear knee space right up in there. So we're good to go there. You got your little pouches here to throw things in. Nowadays we put tablets and iPads. Back then it was the newspaper. Door panel looks great. You got your component sets on your speakers. That's another feature that makes a vehicle more expensive is to have better stereo system like we talked about earlier. Wood trim, all that. Even have some memory settings on your back seat. You have a cigarette ashtray or cigars for some of the people out there. Massive size door, again, big windows, very nice. Your handle's up here, coat hanger there. What is this? It's a little mirror so you can hmm, do your makeup and a lot of lights in that mirror to shine on you. So that's great. The ladies definitely would love that. And there's also one on the passenger side as well. So if the ladies are going out for a fun night on the, on the town, they're definitely doing it up in the Lexus. You have vents here instead. Oh, and vents there. So vents, vents, vents. Lots of air blowing on you in the back of this car. 12 volt down below. So again, more air vents. That means luxury to me. Now right here, let's have a look and see how headroom is. We're good to go on headroom in the back. You do have some lights up here, which also are LED. So again, that is definitely nice. Massive size headrests in the back. You have your ski through through the middle there if you need to put something through the middle. And then right here is where things get really comfortable. I mean, you got this nice big plush center console. It's got controls here to basically, as you can see, you can recline your back seats. My goodness. You can even move this. If you can see that, I'm moving the headrest forward or backwards. So you can really get comfortable in here and just enjoy life. Even has lumbar support for my back. Now you can't do those features over here on the passenger side. So just on the driver's side rear, okay? Does this open up? Sure it does. And then once again, you have rear cooled and heated seats and a control for the uh, the vent or the visor in the back window so and a little cubby hole space this vehicle is perfect in every way if you wanted a luxury vehicle in 07 and you didn't want to buy german engineered vehicles like audi mercedes bmw things like that this would have been the perfect japanese luxury car wouldn't you think? All right, to conclude our video today on this car, we definitely have to take it for a quick spin and take it up on the road and see how it drives because that's where the V8 and the rear wheel drive really come into play. You know, Lexus has always been known to be a soft, comfortable vehicle for people to own and drive. Back in 07, I worked for the competitor of Lexus with Acura and Audi. And let me tell you, you know, here in Charleston, I started working for the Acura dealership back in 1999, and I sold cars there all the way up until 2010. And let me tell you, the Lexus dealership was all the way across town for many years. I'm talking 30 miles away from our Acura store. And then one day, the Lexus dealership opened up just a half a mile down the road from the Acura store. And at that point, we really, as sales guys, had to tighten up and learn our product even more because Lexus started taking our business. 
you know, first off, they put a piano, grand piano in the showroom, leather couches, marble floors, salesmen with suits, and pens that they sign paperwork that look like it's a hundred to two hundred dollar pen. And let me tell you, the brand is great. And yes, we did lose business to Lexus on a daily basis. You know, Acura just did not provide some of the vehicles that Lexus offered, like this car right here. Your Acura RL just doesn't compete with a vehicle like this. And Audi, on the other hand, does have some, like the Audi A8. But anyways, let's go ahead and take it for a ride. So far, feels good to be 10 years later. It hugs the road. It's got a nice feel to it. Suspension feels good. Suspension's nice. You know, I can hear some road noise, of course. Sometimes that has to do with the tires and things like that. But not too overly loud. We'll go down a little farther and we'll turn it around and see how it feels when we really mash down on the gas and give it some acceleration. Brakes feel good, but like I said earlier, it is definitely a comfortable driving vehicle. I mean, it doesn't drive like a Cadillac, you know, this particular model, you know, I don't feel like I'm floating on a cloud, but definitely it's not a sporty feel like a BMW. And again, folks, you know it if you're watching on YouTube right now, this is a LS460. This is a luxury sedan. But the Japanese have always put some luxury in the, or luxury and sportiness into each vehicle. All right, let's go over to this road right over here, and uh, we'll give it a little acceleration test. The good old 10 years later. And uh, hang on a second. And we'll kind of go, we're going to go from a stop to a start. And that's about 60 miles per hour. Pretty quick, got up and went. And uh, not a whole lot of torque steer. As you can see, I didn't really have to, I just held onto the steering wheel and it, it went straight. You know, that probably has to do a lot with that 4,300 pounds weight of this vehicle. It's definitely heavy. Again, it's rear wheel drive. It feels good. So the acceleration was nice. Not bad at all. It definitely has enough power to get you up and out of harm's way when you need to get going. And especially accelerating up onto the interstates and things like that. All right, let's see if we can, how the turning radius is on this big car. Hmm, not bad, pretty good. Give it some gas. That feels really good. I mean, it really gets up and goes. It red lines at 6,500 RPM and uh, it felt like it wanted to go a lot more and we got you know 160 on the dash and you know i have a feeling that this would be a great vehicle to be cruising on the interstate on 95 heading down to miami you know rolling at 80 90 mile an hour or even 100 just rolling and uh, and just enjoying the ride this is just one of those types of vehicles here we go again Oh man, it, it, it feels good when you get up on it. So the 380 horsepower is definitely nice to have. <clears throat> you know, as I will tell you folks in this video right now, every vehicle that I film is up for sale. That's the beauty of this channel, is that you get to see vehicles in a different way on video than your typical reviewer. You know, I try to be a little bit different. And, and yeah, the cars are for sale, so that's always nice. So if you are interested in buying this 2007 Lexus, 
send the dealership an email, give them a call, ravenelford.com, let them know you like it, and don't let it uh, don't let let it sit around very long, folks. Again, the price is sixteen seven eighty with one hundred and twenty five thousand miles. Still, lots of life left, and uh, I don't think the car will be at this dealership very long. Once we post this up on YouTube and on the different car groups that I have on Facebook, it will be gone within 30 days, I guarantee it. So anyways, thanks for watching the video, everybody. Have a great day. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing more pre-owned car review videos on vehicles like this and older very soon. I'm just out there hunting for them, trying to find them. So make sure you subscribe. And if there's a car that you would like to see reviewed on camera that's a little bit different, let me know in the comments section. I don't mind finding them and doing what I got to do to review them. Again, I like to film cars that are a little bit unique in a way and uh, and they're not your, you know, your everyday vehicle that everybody drives or everybody reviews like the Lamborghinis and Ferraris and you know all that kind of stuff so that's why we're doing the Lexus today anyways have a good one everybody we'll see you soon I'm Chad signing out